good afternoon and the warmest welcome to this auspicious occasion, the centenary of the South African Reserve Bank. My name is Lerato Mbele and I'll be your program director for the next hour. Now, this is a remarkable milestone and it comes at a time, of course, when the world continues to grapple with the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we are living through an alarming third wave here in South Africa. And again, we're reminded of just how dire the situation is. We remember that even in the midst of our celebrations. Let me extend a warm welcome to all our guests. We have over 1,600 people joining us for this virtual celebration. And I'd like to acknowledge also our former governors, Dr. Chris Stolls, Ms. Jill Marcus, and governor number eight, and the current minister of finance in the Republic of South Africa, Tito Mboweni, who will address us shortly. I'd also like to welcome governors from across the continent and the globe, former ministers, members of parliament, members of the diplomatic corps, former deputy governors, current and former members of the bank's board of directors, our value stakeholders, and importantly, the staff of the South African Reserve Bank, as they say here in South Africa all protocols observed. Now, this event is being carried live on a number of television channels and also on online platforms. So let me say to all of you, our viewers at home, you are warmly welcomed to the centenary celebration. Our sign language interpreters are Salma Kotsa and Eugidia Jose. Um, we, before we ask the finance minister to address us, I think it's important for us to get a sense of the history of the South African Reserve Bank in its 100 years. Let's take a look. Since it was established in 1921, the South African Reserve Bank has been steeped in the contours that shape the country's history. The bank steered through the introduction of a single currency, the devastating impact of the Great Depression and the subsequent abandonment of the gold standard. World War II institutionalized racial oppression and segregation. The introduction of the RAND in 1961, the oil crisis of the 1970s, the dawn of a new democracy, the global financial crises, threats to its constitutional independence, and today, the COVID-19 pandemic, the worst virus outbreak since the 1918 Spanish flu. The roots of Africa's oldest central bank are emblematic of the political developments of the time, it mirrored the society in which it was founded, first seen as an English-speaking institution and in later years, shifting to an Afrikaans-dominated institution. This remained for 73 years to the exclusion of other population groups. For much of its history, women's staff were relegated to administrative positions at considerably less pay compared to men. Consequently, the political and economic conditions in the country deteriorated with each passing decade, from the 50s to the 70s. And finally, in the 80s, a decade characterized by political uprisings, sanctions, mounting debt, and debt standstills. The advent of democracy in the 1990s ushered in a new era, Continuity amidst the change was crucial for international investor confidence, with President Mandela asking Dr. Chris Stars to continue as governor. In 1999, South Africa appointed its first black governor, Tito Mboweni, followed by Jill Marcus and today, Leseja Khanyago. The transition years post-apartheid were particularly tough. The bank contended with South Africa's crippling debt high inflation, extreme movements in the RAND, and low investor confidence. Parliament became a strategic and powerful means towards the end of greater transparency and public accountability. These are the pillars which sustain the bank's independence in deploying monetary policy instruments and fulfilling its mandate without fear, favor, or prejudice. This year, the South African Reserve Bank also marks 25 years of central bank independence. The introduction of the Monetary Policy Committee in 1999 introduced further transparency and accountability about its policy decisions. It has weathered many economic storms with resilience and steadfastness. 
as it looks to the next 100 years, the bank will continue to fulfill its constitutional mandate of price stability in the interest of balanced and sustainable economic growth. Obviously, that's the journey that the central bank has travelled in 100 years. It's withstood the tests of time. The bank itself is an institution steeped in the democratic traditions of the country and also in the contours of this country's history. Finance Minister Tito Mboweni has also served as the governor of the South African Reserve Bank. That was between the years 1999 to 2009. And he's played a pivotal role in shaping economic policy and monetary policy in South Africa. So, Minister Tito Mboweni, the warmest welcome to you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Program Director, Narato Mbele. Um, thank you very much uh, to the participation in these celebrations by the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, the General Manager of the Bank for International Settlements, Mr. Augustine Custons, the retired governors of the South African Reserve Bank, Dr. Chris Stiles and Ms. Jill Marcus, the participation by the other African Central Bank governors who are here, from the onset, let me thank the current governor of the South African Reserve Bank, Mr. Lisecha Khanyako, the management and staff of the South African Reserve Bank together with the board of directors for organizing this 100th anniversary of the, the Reserve Bank. This bank has uh, gone through many difficulties, from isolation to reintegration, and he has remained strong ever since. It has been a long journey for the bank and for many of us who are participating in the celebrations. On the 4th of July 1998, I was called to Oliver Tambo House in Pretoria, Swane, by President Tabo Mbeki to a press conference where he was to announce that I would be joining the South African Reserve Bank as advisor to the governor of the South African Reserve Bank. Of course, that was a diplomatic way of saying that I was governor designate because we did not have that position in place. It was in many ways a momentous occasion. Africa was indeed on a path of transformation and on a new path in South Africa, where we would integrate the old and the new and still move forward as one country. I've often insisted to be referred to as governor number eight of the South African Reserve Bank, and uh, the current governor is governor number 10, and Dr. Stiles uh, as governor number seven. Um, and it seems to all rhyme very well. Now, at the time when um, I became vice to the governor, there was an ex that because I had been a former cabinet minister, my association with the central bank then would mean that uh, the era of cheap money had arrived. And I made it clear on the day when I was inaugurated as governor, that such thoughts would be severely disappointed, that central bankers are not populists, and that if you meet a populist central banker anywhere, that is normally the beginning of trouble in that country. On the 9th of August 1999, I assumed my role as governor of the South African Reserve Bank. 
and sought to benefit from the experience of Dr. Crystals and began the process of formalizing the monetary policy making process by establishing the monetary policy committee, which met over two days, those days, and immediately after coming to a decision, the MPC would announce his decision at the media conference. This system seemed to work for us for many years. The bank has continued with that system up to today, uh, maintaining its rigor and improving where there are shortcomings. During the course of the new uh, millennium, we introduced the monetary policy framework of inflation targeting. It was very difficult at the beginning because we had no experience with uh, inflation targeting. We did not have the modeling experience which will support the inflation targeting framework. But we worked hard together with the modeling team led by Dalian Small and others, and we managed to create a credible team of forecasters who helped us through the process. And I'm happy to say that by now, the forecasting capacity and capability at the South African Reserve Bank is well matured. The South African Reserve Bank indeed became an active participant in international organizations, such as the Bank for International Settlements, the International Monetary Fund, and others. The South African Reserve Bank became a regular feature in many conferences, seminars, and colloquia around the world involving central banks, be it in Africa, in Asia, in Europe or the Americas. And as one of only two African central banks being members of the Bank for International Settlements, we're also a regular feature at the Bank for International Settlements. There has been many achievements of the central bank, be it the movement away from the net open foreign currency position to a positive sub, uh, positive uh, position as far as reserves are concerned. There's been a massive movement in the ar new architecture, the Twin Peaks architecture that governs the South African banking and financial system. There has been many achievements which today we celebrate here in this meeting. Let me conclude by saying indeed felicitations to all those who work at the South African Reserve Bank and those who have worked there before, those who have maintained contact with the Reserve Bank. And I conclude by thanking Governor Kanyako and his exceptional team at, at the South African Reserve Bank for steering the ship with such excellence and proficiency. The South African Reserve Bank is looked upon by the world under your stewardship as one of the best amongst the best. Congratulations once again, felicitations. Let the next 100 years prove even much better. Thank you very much and congratulations. And thanks to you, Minister Tito Mbuenu, South Africa's Minister of Finance. Governor number eight, thank you for your messages of congratulations for the role you've played indeed as a former governor of the bank. And um, your speech was delivered with a measure of uh, nostalgia. You've taken us through memory lane. And more importantly, you reminded us the fundamentals that the South African Reserve Bank ought to be respected in its independence. It's now time for us to hear from former governors, Stoltz and Marcus as well. It was a great honor for me to be associated with the bank over a long period of 67 years at this about two-thirds of the lifetime of the bank. Over this long period of about 100 years, the bank gained a lot of respect in the international banking and uh, central banking community. I think the bank deserved this and earned it through the sound macroeconomic uh, monetary policies it, it applied, 
if it is expected the disciplines required of central banks uh, and it always endeavoured to achieve the main objective of, the ba of, of central banks and that is to protect the value of the currency. The bank has been relatively uh, successful in achieving this objective over this long period of time, uh, succeeded in protecting the value of the currency, succeeded in uh, maintaining a fairly stable financial environment in South Africa and in this way uh, created uh, a background, an uh, environment uh, that was always conducive for, to the uh, development of the economy to a higher growth rate in the South African economy. If I should give any advice to the future governors of the bank, future staff of the bank, I would say you must continue to work on this basic principles of central banking and central uh, and monetary policies. Uh, May all the governors of the future, including a possible uh, artificial intelligent governor, uh, A1 governor, one that will still have to be created in terms of the fourth industrial revolution that is now in progress, may they all be programmed to continue to serve the bank on this same basis, on the experience that our SARB uh, has gained over the past 100 years. South African Reserve Bank is a highly respected and standard bearer organization. There are a number of features that are important as to why this is the case. First of all, it, is, it has developed an accountability to the South African public. It is accessible. It's looked at being inclusive across race, gender, class, as well as ensuring a meritocracy and a skill both in the development of people and in the opportunities presented to those who interact with the bank, both as employees, as well as the regulated entities and the entire South African community. Because don't forget, a central bank touches the lives of every single person in our country. The bank provides robust thought leadership and critical thinking in these very challenging times. It acts independently from vested interests or political pressure, acting always in the best interests of all South Africans from all walks of life. Also, the South African Reserve Bank plays a critical role, an important role, in and an active role in many global forums where the Saab is frequently the only central bank from the African continent. You can think of the BIS, the IMF, World Bank, G20, the Financial Stability Committee, to name but a few, as well as the very important leadership role, participatory role in the development and establishment and strengthening of all of us in the SADC region as well as on the African continent. It has been a particular pleasure and a privilege to have been able to serve the people of South Africa through my role over 10 years, both as Deputy Governor and as Governor. I have every confidence that the Saab will continue this proud tradition of excellence and integrity in a future that will demand even more of, of us, more of its leadership, more of its entire staff, more of all the work that we do together. Congratulations on reaching 100 years. Celebrate with pride, but also with humility, recognizing that the Saab stands tall, highly respected as a central bank, and a team of professionals in all areas of work that you are responsible for. I wish you every success in the next 100 years. And of course, the resonating theme from the two former governors, Stolz and Marcus, is that the work that's being done by the South African Reserve Bank over the last 100 years is to establish respect and credibility in the rest of the world. And on the international front, South Africa continues to play a meaningful and leading role just earlier this year, Governor Kanyaho concluded his three-year term as chair of the International Monetary and Finan Financial Committee. It's now time for us to hear from the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Ms. Kristalina Gorgieva, followed by the General Manager of the Bank of International Settlements, Mr. Augustine Carstens. 
to Governor Lesetje Kanyago and all staff of the South African Reserve Bank, I would like to extend my warmest congratulations. The centenary of the South African Reserve Bank is a tremendous milestone. Yours is the oldest central bank in Africa, and you have made your country proud. You serve the nation extremely well, and you are highly regarded globally as an independent and well-governed central bank. Of course, uh, Governor Knayago and I worked very closely when he was chair of the International Monetary and Financial Committee. I want to take a moment to thank you, dear Lesetia, for your leadership and excellent contributions to the work of the IMF for the benefit of all our members. Over the past 100 years, the Reserve Bank has made tremendous achievements on monetary and financial sector policies. Today, I want to recognize three of them. First, the pursuit of the bank's core mandate, price stability. It is easy to forget how in the 80s and early 90s, high inflation was creating uncertainty, eroding people's savings, and undermining growth. Since the Reserve Bank introduced inflation targeting some 20 years ago, inflation has steadily declined and become less volatile. Low and stable inflation has increased citizens' purchasing power and instilled confidence for consumers and investors. And it has been particularly beneficial for the most vulnerable South Africans, those with lowest incomes who can ill afford escalating prices. Keeping inflation under control has also helped to reduce interest rates and the cost of borrowing. As the economy was tested like never before during the COVID-19 pandemic, low inflation gave Reserve Bank space to reduce the policy interest rates and to lend support to the economy. The bank's second major achievement has been to boost financial resilience through effective regulation and supervision. In the era of digitalization, the Reserve Bank has embraced innovation. Your approach to fintech regulation showing that institutions can efficiently work together earned the Reserve Bank the 2020 Fintech Policy of the Year Award. Third, the Reserve Bank has been a role model of independence, professionalism, integrity within South Africa, across the continent and beyond. Strong institutions are the foundation of sustainable and inclusive economic growth, something we are all striving for as we look beyond the pandemic. As you embark on your next century, I am confident the South African Reserve Bank will continue to excel. South Africans will benefit from your policies and others in the region and around the world will benefit from the power of your example. Congratulations. It is my pleasure to congratulate the South African Reserve Bank for its 100th uh, anniversary. This is a major landmark for a central bank of an emerging market economy. In particular, I want to uh, say uh, congratulations to the governor, Lesetia Canañago, and all the staff of the bank. It is worth noting that uh, 50 years ago, uh, South, the South African Reserve Bank became the first emerging market uh, central bank that became member of the BIS. And it was only the fifth uh, non-advanced economy, uh, a, a non-European central bank to join the BIS. Therefore, the relationship between the South uh, African Reserve Bank and the BIS is long-standing. The participation of the governor and senior staff has been constant and quite remarkable. Today, uh, Lesetia uh, chairs one of our standing committees, 
and two other standing committees are chaired by senior deputy governors of the Reserve Bank of South Africa. So that means a great participation and great contribution of the Reserve Bank to a work that is undertaken here at the BIS. I can also say, coming myself from emerging market economy, that uh, the Reserve Bank of South Africa has made tremendous achievements and have really uh, exemplified how an institutional development in an emerging market central bank should go. Challenges are still there, but achievements have been great. Therefore, I hope that this success will continue for many more years to come. Also, another dimension where we have been interacting recently is the BIS wants to uh, reach out more in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. And here the Reserve Bank of South Africa contribution and advice have been of the essence. So, very happy to have the opportunity to give you this message. Uh, I wish you all the best and very prosperous another 100 years. And indeed, those messages are well appreciated. It's not just in world finance beyond our shores, but it's also on the African continent that the South African Reserve Bank plays a particularly important role in strengthening regional cooperation. I'd now like to acknowledge congratulatory messages from the central banks of Botswana, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Eswatini, Kenya, Tanzania, the Seychelles, and Zimbabwe. And now let's take a look at the messages that have come through from Lesotho and Mozambique. On behalf of the Central Bank of Lesotho, I wish to congratulate the South African Reserve Bank on its 100th anniversary. This is a historic milestone in the region and in Africa as a whole. In the 100 years that the South African Reserve Bank has existed, it has been a solid pillar for the South African economy and has and continues to play a leading role in the region in various ways. It has been and continues to be a mainstay for many economies in the South African region. It has built a pool of intellectuals and professionals from which all central banks in Africa tap from, from time to time. SAB has truly set the benchmark for what central banking is about and stands for. I'm therefore pleased to express on behalf of the Central Bank of Lesotho and on my behalf, our profound sense of privilege and honor to have worked closely with an organization embodying such stature, legacy, and has such stellar contribution to its economy. We remain a proud partner of this strong, yet warm and cordial giant, and wish it well as it celebrates this momentous milestone. On behalf of the board of the Bank of Mozambique, which is our central bank, I'm very, very pleased to extend our most sincere congratulations on the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the South African Reserve Bank, the CERB. The South African Reserve Bank long-term experience and expertise in monetary policy formulation gain over this century has turned it into an important reference for central banks in our region and around the world by setting good examples on conducting a sound and modern, modern monetary policy framework. And I wish the South African Reserve Bank success for many many years ahead.
to the people of Lesotho, the Saab would like to say Reale Boha, and to those of Mozambique, Obrigado. Now, the central bank is solely responsible for printing and minting banknotes and coins here in South Africa. Just in 2018, we celebrated the life of former President Nelson Mandela with a commemorative circulation banknote series. A year later, we celebrated 25 years of democracy with a coin series designed by young artists. Let's take a look. In July 2018, the South African Reserve Bank launched a series of commemorative banknotes in celebration of the centenary of the birth of South Africa's first democratically elected president, Nelson Mandela. The rich history of the life of Nelson Mandela, fondly known as Madiba, meant that the bank had to use a full range of denominations, as well as a five rand circulation coin to depict it all. The 10 rand banknote commemorates Madiba's birthplace of Mvezo in the Eastern Cape, while the 20 rand banknote features Mandela's Soweto home where he defined his political life. The 50 rand banknote depicts the site where Madiba was captured near Hawick in KwaZulu-Natal in 1962. The 100 rand banknote reflects on Mandela's 27-year imprisonment, most of it on Robben Island, while the inspiration for the 200 rand banknote comes from the moment Madiba greeted the nation for the first time as president. The commemorative five rand circulation coin features a portrait of Madiba. 2021 marks the centenary of the South African Reserve Bank. Together with our subsidiaries, we have produced commemorative circulation coins and notes to celebrate special occasions and honor individuals of national importance. In 2019, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of South Africa's constitutional democracy. We set out to reinvigorate national pride with a commemorative circulation coin collection created for the people, by the people. The SA25 commemorative coin range was conceived in collaboration with Born Freeze, those born into a post-1994 South Africa. Their insights into the meaning of democracy, strongly associated with many of the rights and freedoms enshrined in the Bill of Rights. The result, six circulation coins depicting rights drawn from the South African Bill of Rights were designed. And this is what the five commissioned artists had to say. I'm definitely happy with how these coins look like. I'm very proud. And even the die cutters, well done to them as well, because I'd be, it's not my job alone. Like, there are other people who work on this, and I think everybody did a good job. I feel like I'm a part of South African history. Um, I feel like my soul is going to go into every single coin and I'll live forever. So like I said, it's quite mind-blowing to see sort of your own design transferred onto the coin. So I'm definitely happy. I do believe that making public art in this, this kind of sense is very important. I'm very pleased with the, with the finished product. I mean, like I said, it's so surreal to actually see it and, and know that that's my design on the coin and there's going to be millions of, of them made. The final two rand coin was designed by Esther Quirk, who won the coin design competition. Public participation added a richness and color to our purposeful journey. I've often heard in pop culture, young South Africans referring to these notes as randellas, and I think a sign that young people do care and do watch what the South African Reserve Bank is doing. Now, whilst the Saab has always played a role in ensuring financial stability, this role was formally given to the Saab only in 2018. The bank's response to COVID-19 has contributed to maintaining financial stability during one of the most difficult social and economic periods in our history. Now, here is a message from the chair of the Banking Association of South Africa, Richard Wainwright. The critical role that the Reserve Bank has played in maintaining the stability of our financial system can't be overstated. In the past century, it has seen us through many a crisis. Actually, I was fascinated to learn recently that the Saab was born of a crisis, soon after the First World War, when variances in the gold price in London and South Africa created havoc for commercial banks. And then, of course, there are the times we're living through right now. Were it not for the Saab's extensive efforts to contain the monetary impact of the pandemic, we might now be facing not only a public health and economic crisis, but a financial one too. The fact that we are not is thanks to the role that the Saab has played in ensuring a stable monetary and financial system, which in turn has ensured that South Africa enjoys a stable, strong and effective banking system. Amidst all of this turbulence, the Saab has fiercely maintained its independence, 
which is so important to ongoing financial stability. In recent years, it was unfortunately compelled to resist intense political pressure, but it stood its ground at a time when many other institutions didn't. For that, we must commend the Governor and his team. None of us knows what challenges the next hundred years will bring. It's hard enough these days to see more than a few weeks ahead. But as we strive to build a better future for our nation and all of its people, it's heartening to know that we do so from a sound financial footing. And that is due in no small part to the committed service of the centenarian whose birthday we celebrate today. I wish you all well for the next hundred years. Theoretically known as the lender of last resort, always playing a good role in collaboration and partnership with the private sector there. And now for the governor of our times, I'd like to invite Lesetja Khanyaho, the governor of the South African Reserve Bank, to address us. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am so pleased that so many of you could join us uh, today. On this day, 100 years ago, at Church Street East, the first governor of the Reserve Bank, Mr. William Henry Clark, and 14 other men opened the doors of the SAP to the public. The world had just emerged from World War I leading to unusual financial and monetary conditions. In establishing the SAP, the primary objective was simple, to restore and maintain order in the issue and circulation of domestic currency and restore the gold standard to the pre-World War I rate of exchange. From the archives, the first board meeting minutes dated 29 July 1921 at 10 o'clock, disclosed that the first order of business entailed the purchase of property in Pretoria for 7,000 pounds and the first orders of banknotes. The former was finalized in the late 1920s, while the first batch of banknotes ordered from England was issued to the public on 19 April 19. 22. The monetary policy framework adopted at the SAP's founding was the gold standard, linking banknotes to gold. However, the Great Depression and its link to weaknesses in the gold standard ushered in a period of monetary policy reform. A new policy direction linked to the value of the South African pound to the British pound sterling and the further decision to join the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1946 as a leading member of the international monetary system. Other currency reforms were initiated in subsequent years. In the 1950s, the Decimal Coinage Commission recommended that South Africa formally introduce a decimal system, which eventually led to the introduction of the RAND in 1960. One. This occurred at the same time that South Africa became a republic. Despite the introduction of the rent, the 1960s was a period of rising inflation at home and globally. In 1967, anti-inflationary measures were introduced to slow the rise in the price level. These gains proved short-lived, however, as inflation again picked up in the 1970s on the back of U.S. dollar depreciation as the U.S. removed parity to gold, major fiscal expansions took place, and the first oil price crisis ensued. By the end of the decade, oil prices had tripled and inflation reached post-war highs around the world. The early 1960s, amid the introduction of a new currency, also saw signs of inflation resulting in anti-inflationary measures that by 1967 slowed the, right of, the rate of price increases. These troubles ushered in 
a period of economic policy reform that eventually led us to the modern approaches to monetary and fiscal policy that we see today. Leading up to the 1980s, South Africa was in deep political and economic turmoil. At the height of the anti-apartheid struggle, inflation hit a high of 18.4% in 1986, and annual growth slowed to 1.6% for the decade. Significant capital outflows resulting from the debt default and economic sanctions saw another policy reform, exchange controls. The SAP also adopted a broadly defined money supply growth target framework. Inflation gradually slowed towards the end of the decade, averaging 12.9% in 1989. The SAP Act of 1944 was replaced by the South African Reserve Bank Act number 90 of 1989, which contained the revised primary objective wording of monetary stability and balanced growth. The 1990s ushered in a renewed spirit among South Africans with the advent of democracy. Continuity amidst the change was crucial for the smooth transition to democracy and gaining international investor confidence. This led to President Mandela asking Dr. Chris Stiles, the seventh governor, to continue serving as governor of the South African Reserve Bank. A critical pillar to this was ensuring that the SAP as an institution was stable by retaining institutional memory and the requisite skills while at the same time preparing to transform the organization. The adoption of our constitution in 1996 saw the SAP bestowed greater responsibility in the rebuilding of the South African economy. The SAP's primary object reads to protect the value of the currency in the interest of balance and sustainable economic growth in the republic. Moreover, in pursuit of its primary object, the SAP must perform its functions independently and without fear, favor, or prejudice. But there must be regular consultation between the bank and the cabinet member responsible for national financial matters. Central bank independence emerged as an effective way of ensuring that monetary policy focused on the key objective of keeping prices stable. To ensure that the SAP could pursue that objective independently and effectively, the late 1990s was marked by further inquiry into monetary policy frameworks. The early 2000s saw our biggest policy shift, the adoption of the inflation targeting framework. At the same time, South Africa was the 13th country to introduce the inflation targeting policy framework. At the time, the eighth governor, Tito Mboweni, was tasked with guiding the SAP through this uncharted territory. Our inflation target, set by the Minister of Finance in consultation with the SAP, is between 3 and 6 percent. The adoption of inflation targeting saw a radical change in the way in which the SAP communicated with the public, focusing on transparency through communication and ensuring that independence and accountability worked hand in hand. The flexibility of the inflation targeting framework and its anchoring of public expectations about inflation assisted the country to weather the global financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. 
with the role, the critical role of financial institutions in that crisis brought to the fore, the eighth governor, the ninth governor, uh, Governor Jill Marcus, helped expand the SAP's mandate to explicitly include financial stability. In doing so, a financial stability committee was formed and resources expanded for its work. The early 2010s also saw cabinet approve the move towards the Twin Peaks model. The Financial Sector Regulations Act was signed into law on the 21st of August 2017, paving the way for the formation of the Prudential Authority. In April 2018, the Prudential Authority was officially launched, amalgamating the SAP's Banking Supervision Department, the Insurance Division of the Financial Services Board, and the supervisory team of the Cooperative Banks Development Agency. The South African Reserve Bank was born at a time when the world was exiting the devastating impact of the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. As we approached our centenary year, the world began grappling with the great flu pandemic of our time, the COVID-19 pandemic. As COVID-19 cases began to rise, South Africa, like many other countries, mandated forceful containment measures to abate the human cost associated with the virus. While these measures minimized the impact on human lives, they came at a great cost to the economy. South Africa's real gross domestic product contracted by a substantial 7% in 2020. This was the second largest annual contraction since 1920 and about five times larger than the contraction following the global financial crisis in 2009. Unemployment recorded its highest level since Statistics South Africa began measuring unemployment. Both producer and consumer inflation recorded historic annual average lows of 2.5% and 3.3% respectively for 2020. In anticipation of the economic shock that would ensue, the SAP responded quickly and aggressively with a broad array of actions to limit the economic damage. The SAP's policy responses encompassed monetary policy instruments, interventions in financial market operations, regulatory tools, as well as collaboration with other entities to provide relief to the economy and enable the financial sector to help customers in need. In addition, through its participation in global forums, the SAP contributed to the strengthening of the global financial safety net. South Africa entered the COVID-19 crisis with stable and low inflation rates and moderate inflation expectations, giving the SAP significant policy space to provide support to households and firms, primarily through the reduction of the repurchase rate, the repo. The repo rate was cut by a cumulative 275 basis points between March and July 2020. At the current rate of 3.5% from 6.5% on the 1st of January 2020, the repo rate is at an all-time low, while the prime rate at 7% is at a 54-year low. The economic recovery is still on track, but there will be pitfalls along the way, as illustrated by our shift back to a level 4 lockdown. There is no question that our recovery will progress and our sound policy frameworks will continue to allow flexible approaches whilst building confidence. The SAP is an institution of our democracy. The SAP is a solid institution that all South Africans can be proud of. South Africa, be proud. 
For there are good men and women who staff these institutions, who have proved their mettle repeatedly, rising to challenges they are faced with. With this strength, we face the future optimistic that we will continue to play our vital role in supporting our economy through maintaining price and financial stability. This is not to be possible with weak institutions. Institutions in a democracy matter, and quality institutions matter even more. The SAP is one such quality institutions, and South Africa can be proud of that. Thank you. Thanks to you, uh, Governor Khanyaho, and obviously you've painted a picture for us of the delicate balance of uh, helping to stimulate growth and also maintain uh, price stability in the country and manage inflation, but more importantly for seeing us in this last year, the South African people, the strain that's been taken, and just doing your best to make sure that we too can just cope in the world in which we face ourselves. So thank you so much for that. It's now time for us to be inspired more. Lebohang Masango is an award-winning author and poet. She's also an anthropologist. She's really smart. She's a PhD candidate at Wits University as well. A purposeful journey. The diminishing darkness of dawn dances about our feet. We who wake the sun for the new day. We mothers who boil kettles for families' bathwater. We fathers who carry precious cargo in buses, taxis, and trains. We children who pack school bags by candlelight. We greet the morning before it even begins. With these feet, we tramp, trudge, tread and trek the span of this savannah covered land. We journey, purposeful, powerful, onwards with a perseverance that has never been more grand. Our bodies crouch forwards, breath humming the hymn of this nation we set to work. Sell fruit, clean buildings, cut grass, teach, heal and serve. We set to work so that our futures and economy rightfully expand. A hundred years on from segregation to this celebration, each of you in this room forge the foundation upon which the South African dream can proudly stand. Out of the fire and brimstone of a hellish history, when said Africa dared to think it could achieve self-definition while denying millions of their humanity, when this bank dealt in gender inequality, barring women from senior positions and higher salaries, fulfilling the mandate of the few at the expense of so many. Time tumbled and turned until this great institution dedicated itself to a dream with Mandela's trust for reform taking the lead. The future demanded much more in inclusivity and diversity, so equality and change became the new currency. The year was 1994. You danced us out of the darkness and into a democratic dawn as memorialized in Lady Scully and Neo Mahlangu's collectible coins. We greeted the morning in trains, taxis, buses, by foot. Banknotes and coins passed from hand to hand. On our journey to the voting polls, we exchanged our rands. We touched, laughed and cried as we waited, waited and weaved threads of a dream. We were hope, determination, resilience and relief. Banking on our human rights and constitutional creed denied in this institution for 73 years too many its doors now open to all on Helen Joseph Street come in come in and hear these great names echo through the corridors of history Chris Stulls we salute you Tito Mboweni we salute you Jill Marcus, we salute you, and Lisecha Chanyaho, we salute you, and Nelson Mandela, we remember you.
Because we reached for the rainbow, reached for the sky on this journey with gold gilded beneath our feet, the sun golden on our land, our hearts strong as diamonds to the next hundred years, we journey hand in hand. You, me, we, the people, through power, through purpose, through change, through freedom. America has Amanda Gounden. We have Le Lebohang Masango and so many young, talented, inspirational South Africans doing remarkable things. Now, to mark the Reserve Bank's 100-year history, a commemorative uh, circulation five rand coin will be released. It's similar to the five rand coin you know, issued to celebrate the bank's 90th birthday. Now, this coin depicts significant moments in the bank's history from the iconic tiki, and it includes a coin from the future, the new 10 cent coin, which will be released soon. Now this brings today's proceedings to a close. On behalf of the governor, I'd like to say thank you all for joining us. But just before we sign off, I'd like to invite Lebohang to join me here a little bit. You are gorgeous, both inside and out, and just in your expression. Tell me what inspired you to write this poem in dedication to the centenary. Lerato, thank you so much for that. What inspired me really was the people of our nation. Yeah. We are the heartbeat, we, the, we are the engine of this great country, and of course, the wonderful people of the South African Reserve Bank make our dreams possible through the hard work yeah. and dedication they give here daily. So really, it's all about South Africans, who we are, who right. we've been, and who we hope to become. And obviously, we heard that in designing some of the commemorative coins in the past and the banknotes, young people, um, were asked to participate, tapping into their creative capital. Do you think young people really appreciate what a central bank means for the economy, but for society? Because you've painted a picture of culture, tradition, politics, history. It's not just about the economy. I think that people, uh, young people do have an appreciation for what the bank does because, you know, the bank fuels all of our dreams, all of our aspirations. And I think the bank is doing such a wonderful job of reaching the masses out there through social media, through the commemorative coins that were designed by young people. Uh, they're ensuring that people have a sense of who they are. I know that they also have a monetary policy competition that they do in high schools. Yeah. Uh, so I do think that young people do have an appreciation for the work that gets done here. And I hope Bob Mandela, when he looks down on us from heaven and looks at what the future of South Africa is as embedded and entrusted in people like you, I hope he's proud. Thank you. Lila. We're proud. Thank you. Thank you so much, author, poet. And on behalf of the governor, on behalf of the staff at the South African Reserve Bank, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And I'd like to take this opportunity to wish the South African Reserve Bank a happy 100th birthday. And we wish you many more as you navigate the next 100 years, anchored by your constitutional mandate of price stability in the interests of a balanced and sustainable economic growth for South Africa. To all of you at home, thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.